Hi, welcome to another video. Recently, I covered the updates of Claude Dev, and I thought, what has Ader done wrong that I haven't covered its updates? It's been a long time since I made videos about Ader, and it has changed a lot since then. So today, I'll be telling you about its new updates. You can also consider this as a new tutorial with all the new features that Ader has added in the last month because there's a lot of stuff. Let's go from the oldest release this month to the latest one, which is version 0.54. I'll only be focusing on the main new feature additions and won't talk about the minor things. Anyway, the first new feature added in one of the older releases this month is the new clipboard command. This allows you to paste images or text into Ader's context from the clipboard, which is really cool. For example, if you want to take a screenshot and put it into Ader's context to do something with it, this makes it a little more hassle-free. That's one of the major features added in this release. Apart from that, everything else is just quality-of-life updates. Then, in the next release, they added a new DeepSeq operator that allows you to use Ader simply with DeepSeq. Before this, you had to write a longer command with all the DeepSeq model names and stuff. There's also a new chat mode option through which you can easily start Ader with ask, help, or code mode. So, you won't need to first start Ader and then go into ask mode or anything like that. And there's also a code option if you want to request a code edit while in ask mode. The web scraper has also been improved in this release. Those are the major things added in this release. Now, let's move on to what was added in the next version. This release added support for Anthropic's prompt caching. To use Ader with the Claude model and prompt caching, you can easily use Ader with the prompt cache method when running Ader, which is really cool as well. The cost estimates have also been updated to account for savings from prompt caching and things like that. That was the major thing added in this release. Then, in the next version, Ader added support for LLMs to run shell commands on your computer. Basically, Ader can now generate shell commands and run them, similar to what ClawDev does. It can launch a browser, install new dependencies, run DB migrations, run programs to apply changes, and run new test cases, which is pretty good. There's also a new reset command, which clears the context as well as the chat history, which is really cool. Apart from that, there's not much in this release. In the next release, they added a new Keep Cache Alive option that allows you to keep the prompt cache alive for more than five minutes which helps you save costs even in longer sessions. There are also some better system prompts for improved code generation and things like that. It also has better prompting for shell command generation. So, those are the major things in this release. Now, on to the latest release. The latest release has added model settings for Gemini's new experimental models, and it also has an option to turn off shell command suggestions, as well as performance improvements for autocomplete in large mono repos. So, those are the major things that have been added to Ader. Now, let me show you all these features that I've talked about and how you can use them. First of all, make sure that you've updated Ader. To do that, just run pip install upgrade Ader chat, and it will get updated. Once that's done, you'll have the updated version of Ader, and now you can use the new features. First, let me show you the prompt caching option. To do that, just run Ader with the cache prompts option. Once you do that, prompt caching will start working, and you'll start saving money with Claude when you use it. Now, apart from that, there's also the new clipboard option, which will take the image or text from your clipboard 
and add it to the context. For example, here I have an image, and if I use the clipboard option, it will be added to the context, which is pretty good as well. Now, there's also the DeepSeq operator if you want to use Ader with DeepSeq for better quality while being cheaper. There's also the new chat mode option where you can start Ader in ask, help, or code mode. Ask mode is for just talking about code, help mode is similar, and then there's code mode, which is the simple editing mode, which is also really cool. Now, apart from this, there's the shell command feature. So to test that, let's run Ader in cache mode and ask it to generate something. Okay, so over here, let's ask it to make a simple finance tracker app using HTML, CSS, and JS. And it's generating now. Let's wait a bit. And it's done. So, as you can see, it's asking for approval. Let's do that. And now, as you can see, it's giving us a shell command to open the HTML file that it has created, which is really cool. Let's approve it. And as you can see, it runs the shell command and opens it, just like what ClawDev does. You can also just ask it to generate the shell command if you want, which is really cool as well. Now, the next one is the reset option, which is really good. You can just type in reset, and it will reset everything, including chat history and context, which is also really good. You don't need to run multiple commands to reset everything. You can do it with just one command. Apart from that, you have the new Gemini model support and stuff like that if you wish to use it, which is also good. Those are the major upgrades. Ader was already really good, and now it's even better. I mean, what else do you want? It works well, and can do almost anything you want. There are also some smaller updates that make Ader even better to use. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you liked this video, consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Or you can also consider becoming a member by clicking the join button. Also, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye.